Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bharatiya, and my next guest is Deepti Shrivastava, Head of Product at Observable. Deepti, it's great to have you on the show. It's very nice to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Can you give me a kind of very quick elevator pitch? What is the company all about? Yeah, Observable is here to change um, the world with data visualization. Uh, we provide an expressive and rich platform where folks can create um, you know, interactive dashboards, graphs, charts, um, and we want to use that to help more and more people who want to communicate uh, with data and gain data insights in a collaborative manner. That's what we are here to do with Observable. If you look at data visualization, it's uh, it's something it seems to be of interest uh, to uh, th folks like data scientists or data teams. Uh, but uh, from what I hear about Observable, you're also trying to help uh, to, to leverage it to improve code. Uh, I want to know from you is that what should developers know about this aspect of data visualization so they can leverage it to improve code? Developers sort of need to understand what they're building, right? what they're coding, and what the impacts of that are. So the whole life cycle of writing code to deploying it to understanding what the impact of it is. right? And ultimately, with data visualization, what we're saying is that um, it taps into your neurological system that helps you understand things better, right? A picture is worth a thousand words. And so as data is growing, as um, data is getting more complex, regardless of what the type of data is, whether it's, um, you know, uh, HTTP status, status dashboards, whether it's code complexity, whether it's a sort of, you know, job failures and things like that, all of that is data, right? And in order to understand, like, what all of this data is telling you as a developer, you know, you can use a picture to visualize thousands, hundreds of thousands of data points really quickly. Right? So the idea around data visualization for developers is the same as the idea of like, you can understand things better with lots of data points very quickly if you visualize it in some sort of graph, chart, um, you know, that kind of uh, format. Right? And so you can visualize um, algorithms to understand uh, what it's doing better. You can visualize, um, you know, we have a template, we'll talk about templates, but we have a template that actually, um, yeah, it visualizes sort of DevOps uh, dashboards such as flaky tests, right? And, I, and when you're in the middle of sort of uh, production emergency and you want to figure out, um, you know, what's going on, it's really easy and much faster to do um, root cause analysis when you have a dashboard that tells you what's going on, right, with your production data. Um, just to give you another example, sort of if you want to visualize sort of code dependencies and hotspots, you can do that. You know, we, we build flowcharts, right? Flowcharts is data viz. So I think data viz is all around us. It's just that a lot of us don't think of it that way, but ultimately taking multiple data points and putting it into a picture so you can make sense of it really quickly, that's what we're here to do with Observable. You mentioned, you know, to visualize it, visualize it. So what is Observable, uh, observable doing to kind of uh, not only democratize it, but also make it more accessible to developer. And I think that's where the template come into the picture that you recently announced. You know, with our mission, uh, we obviously want the pieces that help you explore data and visualize it and communicate it. We want those pieces to be more approachable. So, uh, you know, we talked about plot in a, in a previous setting. Um, plot is about making sort of the actual act of data exploration and data visualization easier and faster, right? So that more people can, with its, in, with its simple API, they can sort of both create a dashboard uh, or create a chart in um, you know, as simple as one line of code, but then there is infinite expressiv expressivity because it's code. The next step of that, which is what I'm really excited to talk about um, with you, is templates. So templates are pre-packaged um, data visualization artifacts uh, meant for specific business-related workflow each. And the idea with templates is that, one, you don't need to start from scratch because as much as it's fun to sort of open an empty you know, notebook or an empty document, sometimes you just need to get your work done. Um, and so you, know, you don't have to start from scratch. It's pre-packaged. You can do a simple thing as upload a simple CSV and voila, within minutes, you get something that would have taken you, you know, hours, days, maybe weeks to build. The other aspect of templates is that you don't need to be an expert in data visualization techniques or in JavaScript to get started, right? Because you have this prepackaged um, sort of 
blueprint, you can use it to visualize things like DevOps dashboards, things like you know hiring timeline, cash flow, things like you know cohort grids and you know user research surveys. All of that, you know, packaged up into one sort of understandable artifact that you could use with your own data to get insights and um, you know communicate that within minutes. And you hit uh, the nail there. You know, sometimes you just want to get the work done. And sometimes I look at developers just like you know artists. You should you should just focus on the canvas, not what kind of brush, what kind of oil, what kind of paint you should be getting. We get so much buried under that that we f forget what is the core focus. So if I look at templates, you're basically kind of not only making it more accessible, democratizing it. You're also lowering the barriers so that it doesn't matter whether they are expert in JavaScript or in, in that or not. Can you also you should you know there are templates for everything. Can you share some of the examples of how developers are using it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to share actually two examples just to demonstrate how you know you don't have to be a developer. So our developer templates for right now, you know, this is the first set of templates that we've just launched earlier this week, which is very exciting for us. These are interactive dashboards that uh, visualize sort of um, flaky tasks. If you have a GitHub repo, right, and you're like your entire team of maybe hundreds. Uh, you know, tens, hundreds more developers are using these branches to run integration tests, and then you want to quickly visualize where things are breaking because you don't want that to go into production, right? So that's a dashboard that we have um, uh, for flaky tests for developers. Um, the other dashboard that we have on the you know business side is, as I talked about earlier, is this user retention dashboard. Now. Everyone who has any kind of platform that has users on it, right? Whether you're a product manager, whether you're a financial analyst, uh, you know, whether you're doing consumer space, everyone wants to understand user retention, right? And especially sales products. And building these user retention graphs, which are you know visualized usually as cohort grids, if you've ever done it, you know that it takes like days, if not weeks, to build it correctly. And we actually have a um, cohort grid template. So all you need to do is sort of take your CSV data. Most of the data is in sort of tabular format anyway. So you take your TSV or CSV data, you upload it, and within like this much time, you can visualize your data, you can get the cohort grid, you can get um, user retention graphs, and you can even do them by segments, right? And, and that's so much more powerful. That means that you know, I as product manager or you, you as business analyst don't have to go to your developer to ask them to build you a cohort grid from scratch. You can just upload your data and get the visual insights. And if I were to add just one more thing, what's cool about this, because you could maybe do it somewhere else too, is that the code is right there, right? So if you wanted to customize it, you could lean on your developer friends in your team or other experts in your team that understand JavaScript or no JavaScript and just ask them to you know, update it for you, right? And so getting started was much faster, right? And then you know, extending it and customizing it, maybe you want to use your company's brand colors for these cohort grids. All of that is totally possible because it's right there, the code, the, the pros that explain the context as well as the graph are all there. It also seems there is a collaborative angle to it as well where your team scan. So it sounds more like, like a, a GitHub for, for templates and data visualization there. So can you explain this aspect as well? Because when you do talk about, you know, treating it like a GitHub or any collaborative tool, you also want different people to have different access or rights or permissions. Otherwise, everybody is going there doing everything. So talk about the collaborative aspect of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, we believe collaboration is the way forward, <laughs> you know, because as, as we talked about, right, as data is growing, there are more people in the team that need to understand data in order to make decisions, right? Data-based de decision-making or data-driven decision-making is something everybody wants to do and, and everybody talks about, but it's super hard, right? First, you don't have the right access to the data, then you don't, you know, you, everybody's not looking at the same data. So with Observable, with our document, with our notebook, Everybody can collaborate and see the same data visualization, right? And using the same data and the pros. So apart from transparency, it means that everybody is working in the same document um, without having to go from like a dashboard on a BI tool to uh, you know a document with context to a slide deck for an exec, right? You could do that. Um, you can do that, but for you know day-to-day -day decision making, you can all be in one same document, which is an observable document. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is we have a, you know, finer-grained access control. So you can have viewers, you can have editors, 
right? Um, so that you can control what you want who to see, you know, for better sort of access control. And the third thing is, you know, we actually have a, a product tier that is more for private collaboration. So Observable has a three-tier sort of SaaS model where, you know, we obviously have all of the feature goodness of Observable uh, for free for the community to use, to, to explore, right? We love that aspect of the community uh, and we don't want to gate it. Um, and then, you know, we do have um, sort of the Teams tier, which is about getting, you know, companies and teams and companies to, uh, you know, collaborate privately with their private data. And, and so that gives you another um, sort of cut towards uh, making sure that, you know, there is uh, access control and privacy. It's too early to talk about a lot of things that are already there in your pipeline, but if you can share what kind of roadmap you have for this year at least. You know, I, I know I keep saying this, but I am excited about this. We really are wanting to make data visualization, thinking with data approachable for anybody who wants to explore data and communicate data insights. And so we talked about plot earlier, sort of plot and templates are sort of the starting point for that, for making that whole journey more uh, approachable for more people. So the obvious thing is, you know, we're gonna add more templates in more categories so that more people can, you know, get their work done faster with Observable. Um, and then we're also, um, you know, making more um, sort of aspects of our document, our platform more approachable, uh, you know, with better cell uh, affordances, such as, you know, you can now choose whether you want to write Markdown, um, you want to write JavaScript, you want to write tech, right? So all of these things allow you to sort of not have to really fiddle with the code as much as just getting your work done. So if you want to write prose, you can just write it, right? And you don't have to worry about the Markdown backticks and things like that. So again, we are a code-based platform, but that shouldn't be a hindrance, right? It should be an enabler for more uh, expressive and more customizable uh, aspects of data exploration and visualization. But we are trying to sort of lower the floor, if you will, making it more approachable for more people to just get started, right? And if, if they wanna learn more, that's great. If they wanna rely on people who have subject matter expertise to, to expand their uh, ability to do, use Observable, that's great too. We, we're here for, for all aspects of this spectrum of people who want to visualize with data you know, JavaScript spectrum, data visualization spectrum. We want to serve everybody. Yeah, and when I listen to you, I also realized that, realized that uh, because of this pandemic last year, a lot of companies, they rushed towards digital transformation. They rushed towards cloud. And now that kind of hangover is over. Now they are settling down. They are looking at the day two uh, problems. What have you observed, no pun intended, it kind of in sense of how you see the 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 adoption of data visualization growing and more and more companies are going cloud native or digital you actually touched upon it so digital transformation was accelerated over the pandemic because everybody realized they just can't rely on humans being in the same space to fill process gaps or to fill sort of those digital digital sort of transformation gaps um, so I think that's here to say, here's to stay and here to sort of continue. Uh, my previous life was all about cloud and, you know, getting enterprises to cloud, um, you know, when I worked at Google Cloud um, and before that at Oracle. And all I've seen over the years is that more and more and more companies are realizing how much they need to sort of both collaborate and be online. And that's what Observable is. It's online and it's a collaborative tool and it allows you to make sense of data. Right. So, of course, as I said right earlier, everybody wants to be data driven when it comes to decision making. It's really hard. And our entire mission is that if more people in a team are empowered to understand data together, to collaborate with it together, you know, and share those insights and communicate together, it both allows more people to, you know, have database decision making, but also operate off of the same sort of guiding principles around what the data is saying to them, which ideally accelerates decision-making. Excellent. Deepti, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today and talk about uh, Observable. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It was so fun to talk to you and thanks for having us.